good surface. Um, the free fork attack hubs in China is um, most likely is still the QQ, I mean the game accounts and QQ accounts. Especially for QQ, um, the game accounts with the, some kind of uh, reference, you know, you could exchange with the money. They all like, they like to generate, uh, to provide a um, children generator and also like to, um, the children, then you could steal, steal the passwords and uh, also the online game credentials. Um, China made malware actually like a, any, anyone try the dim sum? Yeah. But, uh, I, I believe that, uh, in Caesar Palace, I get it, it's 19 dollars, US dollars, but I have not tried, okay? But in Hong Kong, it's 19 dollars, Hong Kong dollars. Please drop me an email, if you come to Hong Kong, I, I get you to an excellent dim sum. Okay? And, okay, this way. Well. All right, so uh, I'm going to cover a little bit uh, the reverse engineering methodology that we used when going through. We have a whole large collection of Chinese malware and tools. Um, and so essentially what we did was we focused on comparing data between the different samples to try to get a bigger picture of is there sharing, what trends, you know, do they use specific programming lang languages, this sort of thing. And we have a whole automation system, essentially virtualization sandboxes that are not based on VMware um, to avoid being detected. Um, we have a dynamic automated API logging. We essentially log every function call um, when the, the malware is executed. And this gives us, you know, what files are written to the system or deleted or modified, registry keys, um, network API calls, this sort of thing. Then we tap the network outside the system and parse that looking for outgoing, you know, command and control call home or whatever, um, as well as some automated static analysis. Okay, it's my turn again. Wow, the first sample. Um, you know some kinds of shell code, you, I find some boring shell code, uh, 06, 06, some numbers. However, for this shell code is quite great. A script, you'll find it. Uh, it's most quick. Yeah. You'll find that some wordings are in, translated in the Cantonese, uh, in, in Mandarin, like um, you know, Tian is one day, okay? And also like um, this one, I need you. <laughs> Actually, this shell code is with this lyric from Nairus from Mr. Chow from his Taiwan is very famous singer. So they are singing songs and sh quote the shell code. <laughs> I like it. The second one is um, they put the fingerprint everywhere. Then you could find it like this PDF exploit footprints and you'll find here it's very small wordings here is Inga. If you uh, mentioned about there's a fifth, five generations of, uh, of the hacker generations, then actually Inga is the second generation. Maybe he, Inga is the high idol of, the, of this uh, uh, shell code writer. And also they put the lab here, pen lab. I don't know what is pen lab, okay? But it may be the hacker lab. Here, fake QQ. Anyone have the QQ account? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for support. <laughs> Actually, QQ accounts, like, uh, this is a fake QQ. When you get it, yeah, your user password, uh, credentials will be go to, where will go? Go, 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 go to a government website. Actually, the China government website is Trojan. It's attacked by the criminal. <laughs> so I, I simply type in the who is in the, in the Google search engine, and then, wow, this site is Trojan. Once Trojan, you find it a list of here. Oops. A list of iframe is injected, even it's very small, but you find it lo a lot of orange spots. And also from the website, and you find, wow, there's many children, web children, I think injected. And the attack path is like that. Okay, build up fake QQ, cheat your account, get your credentials. At the same time, the, um, the website, the, the, the return website is children with the different iframes. Then the most important is you reset the site, you get the exploit as a gift. Then the 
China government sites are be, always become the target because um, they have some difficulties. I mean, they have tried their be- already done, done their best, but you know, from different provinces, they need different control. Um, and as, as you know, then it is hard to for and still are, are room for improvement for in China. So and also the the number four is a fresh zero day attack. This is fresh zero day attack, but I don't want to stick it out a lot of details. But you will find here. Do you know these wordings? And hey, it is in Mandarin. It's a uh, darkness. What is the meaning? When you like that here, you got JavaScript, and uh, this is a I mean malicious script and embedded in the IH. HTML, then once the one is reset, then actually it contains the exploit for the for the uh, fresh prayer. At the same time, it contains another exploit for shell loading the shell sh- shell code loaders. The shell code loaders is very interesting. Um, it is loaded from in, uh, another place. I mean another ex- uh, test files. So you could gain two combined choices. Uh, could come back uh, ways for exploit your your computers. Then once it's exploited, you get a dropper. The dropper download the password stealer. At the same time, you will get it is a botnet based. It. So you will get a commands. Then then the attacker could get your password, get whatever they want. The most I mean the ultimate target is to get a game account's credentials again. Thankful for Armonize team about this detailed analysis. The interesting part is, and hey, what is that? I search again, and hey is, wow, it's an and hey working group here. Oh, where's the cursor again? And hey working group. The latest cho- web children, web children generator, children, children programming training course is very comprehensive. Then free of charge. All of them I, I am well and also calling download it without money, okay? Then you can get it, you can play it, you can try to be in fact. Yeah, so once you get it, you have bundle of the latest exploit you could choose, like a exploit supermarket, <laughs> okay? Then you can pick up your choice, then you don't need to pay the money, but you get the return back. You get the script, your source code, you get the office data script, but you'd never know, but I just want to get the credentials. And you would like to bypass something like, where's the cursor again? Well, your, your computer cursor sometimes disappear, man. <laughs> you fix 360, you bypass the 360. 360 is a very famous antivirus software in the mainland, okay? And then once you, a simple click, simple click, simple click, and then you get the files, and you get the, Different, I mean, the source code of the I, uh, IE Dutch HTML with the source code and shell code. So then we kind of took several of the main droppers. We just concentrated on an IE7 and IE6, the Aurora exploit, as well as this is the XML RPC overflow or canonicized overflow. And we just sort of looked at their actual technology in shell code development. And actually, here you see it's fairly, it's clear, it's in clear text. Um, all of their shell code is based upon a dropper. All it does is download another exe from a website and execute it. Quite simple. Um, we can kind of see here that it's not altogether that, that strong. You have these weird spaces at the end of the shell code, these don't do anything. There's no further obfuscation past just the JavaScript obfuscation because this was in a big blob of unencoded UTF strings. So then we see in the next iteration of this code base, it's the same thing, but it's much cleaner. It's, you know, it's gotten a little smaller. We went from 814 bytes of shell code to 612. But again, it's still very, very clear. You can follow this. You throw it in a hex editor and just see what it's going to do. You don't actually have to go any deeper than this with this type of shell code. And then they kind of dropped this new one on us. And so the, the timeline between these three is a couple of months between each one. And this last one was only a couple of months ago. And suddenly, and this only generates shell code. This doesn't, this doesn't uh, tie into any of the other exploit packs that they have. Because what you see here is just their general exploit pack. So you click the button, and it'll actually generate a website that hosts up the individual exploits for those things. Um, for this shell code, it's much larger. 
it's you know a little over 1,000 bytes here, and it's actually XOR encoded. So they already have they actually have a a stub at the beginning of the shellcode itself that decodes the rest of the shellcode. And if that wasn't enough, so after we decode that, we can see this, the standard downloader here. It pulls down your actual EXE. They also have an even more sophisticated structure inside of that that does continual obfuscation of actual strings. So for actually resolving of the DLL functions to do the downloader function and execute. So from the original point, which was about three months ago to about a month ago, their level of expertise in shellcode drastically jumped. And this was just sort of what we wanted to ex expose here is that their, their level of expertise in this area progresses fairly rapidly. And so here are just some more examples from, from their actual generated web pages. If you really want to look for them, you can look, look at them later. But the interesting thing, of course, in their actual sprays is all of the identification markings you'd ever want in the whole wide world. Their QQ number, which is perfect. You can contact them, as Anthony says. Good support. Yes, yes. So, and again, you know, it's just they, and their obfuscation is more of an advertisement than obfuscation. Yes, it doesn't directly go to, to actual shellcode immediately, but if you come across a web page that has cute in it, how many times? Uh, so, again, just more examples. Here's this. This is a fun one here, where it actually it gives you a warning in Mandarin that you, you do not change the shell code in here in Notepad because it'll break it due to the actual control lines. Which is, you know, that, that's nice of them. They, they want to make sure that you get a quality product, right? That's that's important. <laughs> You know, again, just they, they test, tested, fully supported. Very good. Yeah. And here's, here's another fun one. We got, we, got, we got a, you know, call out to HD in their, in their page. And they obviously use Metasploit. They understand us. They actually, they research us and they keep track of what we're doing. So. I was talking about the Kava stuff. Oh, Kava? Oh, yeah. The other, the other fun thing, uh, I guess I'll let Anthony explain. Do you know anyone installed the Kapers Kapersky antivirus at home? Your computers, actually in Chinese, uh, um, is uh, Mandarin is Kappa, and then actually Kappa CK is like Kapersky, you know. Actually, is the this signature is Kapersky. Then he may say he may like the to dance to, the, I mean the like uh, the uh, maybe the shell code um, pinpoint for the Kapersky. Okay. Yep, actually it's for the goals is compromise the game account's credentials and export generator is free and actually the site is live. Okay, you've got the computers, go there and try it. And they have the, got the sales hotline and easily bewitched. Apply a QQ account right now. <laughs> All right, uh, so I find it interesting that in their shell code they target a specific antivirus company. That's kind of that's kind of cool. So um, what you're looking at on the screenshot is uh, a collection of the ANHE exploit generators. There's about 20 of them or so. And um, they're all distributed in RAR files. And all of these RAR files basically come with like an advertisement page, or m many of them do. And in the advertisement page, it has uh, their website. So the ANHE guys also use the name QQQ for their team. I think they either change names or they use two names. But basically, when you download this tool, they provide you with a QQ address that you can contact if you need support or help on how to use their tool, or maybe other Trojans. Um, the other thing that's interesting is if you look at the file times on the exploit generators themselves, often these file times are before that particular vulnerability was disclosed here in the US. So what this means is that not only do they know about the zero day before it's published, but they have a fully functional exploit generator that anybody can use. It's literally one click generation um, way before the time that the exploit's disclosed. So that's to me kind of significant because it means that you know their O-Day use is pretty advanced. So um, we compared about 20 of these exploit generators to try to get an understanding of is like one guy coding them all or are they using similar styles or what's going on. And we noticed that they all use this DLL, skin PPWT L.dll. Um, almost all of them use a specific version of this, and then one has a slightly different version. We didn't know what this was at first. It took some analysis to realize, and, and I'll get to that in a second. 
So, but what this shows is that they reuse the same DLL over and over again.